There we go, happy days. Well, hello, Richard. Thank you very much for sharing your video. There's um lots to learn from it. Um, a few mistakes made. I won't be too harsh, knowing that um you haven't been out able to come out and train for a while, and um we're just coming out of lockdown. Um, but yeah, a few mistakes were made. It was going to be good learning for everyone, so I thought I'd do um a proper debrief on it. Um, for the whole group to learn. We put a little um, stopwatch up. We'd, we'll just watch it at half speed and then I'll debrief properly. So, boom, there's the initial frontal. No input, no input. There it starts to go into a rotation. And we're pulling on the closed side rather than the open side to stop the rotation. Now, the whole time throughout this video, you're concentrating on the cravat, not on the rotation. Remember, it's the rotation that's going to hurt you. There's the first little parachutal as we start to come out of the rotation. And there's no good trying to clear a cravat while you're in a rotation. So your first um, most important thing is to stop the rotation. There was the second little parachutal. And there was the third, which actually started to clear the cravat. Now the cravat's small enough that the brake action is going to start to work. And now we're out and actually in <clears throat> quite a fast rotation. So that's 33 seconds before we're under control, even though we're not quite out of the spiral. Now let's go back and break it down. So this initial view here <clears throat> for anyone flying a comp wing, the, this whole series of events is quite common on comp wings. Um, the way it folds up into a little ball, the way it goes from the center, the tips come forward, you end up in a rotation. Um, so for everyone coming onto this level of wing, if you ever see this, you should be like, um a war veterinarian with shell shock hearing a bang you should be banging those brakes or the bees or taking the bees down as far as they'll go if it's not doing anything just releasing and punching through with your brakes at this point here there you can't you cannot overdo your input you cannot overreact you can maintain for too long and it will stall but you cannot overdo the input if you bang both brakes now past your hips and released it would keep the span and not let these tips come forward so you should never let your wing come past this configuration really because you should already be your one you're over a second in and it takes a split second to just bang maximum break and your, your wing would never deform more than this point this is super important because everything past this point things get a lot more complicated so that is, this is mistake number one. Okay, the, the big one is, is not doing an input here. Then, boom, comes forward and you can see still no input, still no input, still no input, nothing. And then there's an input here, but you've just fallen to your side. So this isn't a pump on this brake. 
it's you're you're hanging your weight boom off to the side so i would say it's more the fact that you're trying to keep yourself upright than actually doing an input um, and we're we're four seconds in so before you you actually tip you know we're, we're two and a half three seconds in that's more than enough time to do something with your brakes just looking up um is not enough you can see at this point if you ever see something like this above your head the best thing to do is stall it it's never going to come out symmetrically so you know if it doesn't come out symmetrically you're going to end up in a rotation so it's a clue that okay i can either stall it now or take my chances and i'm going to be straight into a rotation so i need to now be thinking about stopping a rotation or stalling it so either way your hands should be coming down because you don't want those tips anywhere near each other so we don't stall it so it opens and goes into a rotation straight away the rotation is actually a really deep auto rotation a sat like configuration um, that's actually such a slow sat it's almost coconutting so if you hit the ground in this sort of configuration uh, much less um, dangerous than a full-on spiral but any sort of rotation you should be focusing on on stopping on a paraglider um, that's with the open side not with this side this is actually going to be increasing your um, your sack going deeper um, but you haven't got much of that wing side left at all so it's not aggravating the situation that much but you are pulling the wrong side you can just see from here that's where your center logo is so you haven't got much brake action at all on this side so if i saw a cravat of that size uh, you you have to stall it you can't spin a cravat of that size out so stalling is your only option at this point to do that you want to slow the rotation and then take it to stall now you've done hundreds of stalls so um you would have been fine with that so we're in a rotation, still in a rotation, still in, still in. I can see a bit of brake action on the open side. Jink. And we start to come out of the rotation. And then you see the wing. Whoop. Doing that. That means our body swung under. And we're going through the exit window. But then we let it drop back. And start to go into rotation again. And it's accelerating into rotation. You're pumping. Um, so I counted the amount of pumps you did, and you did 10 brake actions to try and clear the cravat. Um, we should be able to clear a cravat in one action, either a stall or a, an efficient um, spin. The whole time you're doing these inputs, we're losing height in the rotation. Jink. So there we go, parachutal. So we, we slowed the rotation, we're coming under the glider, and that's really common in these type of wings, your Enzo's, your Zeno's, your two-liners. If you have a big cravat, often as you slow the rotation and you start to come under the glider and reload, it will automatically jink, do that movement um, and drop straight into parachutal. You can see the wing deforms on the cord and starts to go to parachutal. So if we don't at that point maintain that parachute tool, which is tricky or even better, just knocking it into tail slide from that point, it's going to refly and instantly go back into a rotation, which it does. So the second time it comes back and goes parachute tool, boom, you can actually see it starts to clear the cravat. So that second parachutal was much more efficient at clearing the cravat than any of your brake inputs have been this far we're 23 seconds in now and we let it refly so instead of the air being blown from this way and helping clear the cravat it starts to get pressure on the front side again so it resticks. at this point now you can see that there's the center line of our glider. We now have enough um, trailing edge to use the spin method, but we have to make sure with the spin method um, 
that we are not in a rotation because when you bang the brake and hold it, it wants to draw you into that that spiral more. So you know from your training um, that first of all, we stop any rotation. That's what's going to hurt you. Second of all, um, we get a new heading. You're at cloud base. That doesn't matter too much. But looking around gets your bearings, gets you looking out for other pilots. Then good body position, weight shifting away from that cravat. And then it's a punch and a hold. You don't clear cravats by just punching. So you punch and hold. And it's whether you hold it for a split second or half a second or a whole second. It doesn't matter. What you should be looking for is, is it clearing the cravat? You have an action and a reaction. You can see with your inputs, boom, there's a big input. And you put your hand up. But there's still a cravat there. So you want to maintain your hand at that point. And you go again, big input, and you put your hand up. Nothing's happened. So that that input there hasn't done what you wanted it to do. It's not going to be as effective because you're in a rotation, but you punch that brake to clear the cravat. If it hasn't cleared, you maintain that brake. Maintain it and maintain it. The wingtip is going to peel off the lines, then start to fly back. And it's at the point that the glider starts to fly backwards that it'll blow that off. So then we have a few more goes. That one was more effective. Now it's small enough to clear. But you can see you're in quite a heavy spiral. If if ground level was here, you'd be screwed. Right, and that's because we're focusing on the cravatted side, not on the side that's going to stop the rotation. So really your rotational awareness throughout this whole thing um, was not great. And it was actually the first time that you went parachute tool or the second time you went parachute tool was when it was really effective at clearing that cravat so that's what you should be looking for when you stop the rotation you start to swing under and you notice that side's going mushy and dropping into parachute tool that's what you're actually looking for because one you, you've stopped the rotation and two that dropping into parachute tool or taking it into tail slide is then going to blow the cravat off so the most serious thing for me with this whole episode this whole episode was to not be aware of the rotation you're in the second was you rushed the cravat clearing um, you're doing punching inputs 10 of them rather than punch and hold um, it would be good to see this from different angles to see if your legs are bent if you've got a good, good body position where your weight shift is it's quite hard to see from this point it would be also nice to know your total height loss because if you were not as high as you were now and you didn't have this um, situational awareness of your rotation you could have got yourself into trouble if you were too low to throw and lacking the um, awareness of being in a rotation uh, you could have got yourself hurt um, so the big takeaway things are first of all you need to react a, a second doesn't sound like a long time it's a very long time. Get a stopwatch out and try and do something rapidly. You can do it in a split second. And when you're flying this level of wing, boom, you need to be shell-shocked. You need to be reacting super quick to any movement like this. And you cannot overreact. Punch. Both hands. Bang. Down below your arse and up. Big, quick input. If you're late on the input there, it's a punch and hold, and then you're going to have to take it to a stall. If you ever see this shit show above your head, stall it because you're going to end up in a rotation because it's not going to reinflate. So that's the that's number two there. If it's a shit show, stall it. Number three, this is the biggest safety point, even though, I mean, this, this input is not a good input. Ooh. But number three would be to stop the rotation biggest safety point number four is if you see a cravat this size oh what's going on there if you see a cravat this size you can't spin it out you've got to stall it and don't start to try and clear a cravat whilst you're in a rotation Get it under control. Stop the rotation. Get a new heading. Good body position. Look at the cravat. It's still going to be there. Boom. Punch. 
hold, maintain, wait until that break input does something. And for anyone flying a higher rated wing, this is quite common that when you slow the rotation, it will stall instantly like it's doing here. But that's your friend. That will actually help you. So having that finesse with that outside hand, knowing that it's just slipping in and out of parachutal, just playing in that window is going to get, it's going to reduce the cravat. So good, lots of lessons to learn. Like I said, I'm being pretty harsh because we're all rusty at this point. Um, but you can just see you've got to train more. But I'm glad you're all right, mate. Uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Sunday the 18th of April. It's 22 minutes past nine. Uh, uh, yesterday when I was flying at Jenkin Fell, I had an incident. Uh, so this is a verbal, this is a record of my uh, memory as it stands at the moment. It's a shame that the video hasn't uh, been immediately available. So I'll have to see if I can recover that. Basically I had a big collapse. Looked up, the wing was all, you know, collapsed and together, wing tips together in the middle. Um, that's the first thing I saw. Um, I remember thinking uh, reserve, um, but I was at 5,400 feet, which is, you know, it's almost a mile high. So throwing the reserve didn't seem an immediate priority. The wing had a substantial cravat on the left hand side, probably about 40% of the, the wing there, and I'd gone into a rotation. Now I remember feeling that being distinctly different from a spiral. So I think that was a sat type rotation. I felt like it was going backwards. I also remember thinking the good thing about this is I wasn't twisted. Um, so once I'd recognized I was in that rotation, I was just using the right, I think I was still on the, uh, the toggles, the rear risers. Um, I was just, slowing the rotations. It wasn't a problem, the rotation at all. There was, I was nowhere near any of the rotational speeds that I get up to in the spiral, so I was not at all concerned about blacking out or anything. So anyway, one way or another, it was I, I think it was, I was still on the toggles. I should have said I was on speed bar going into this lift. That's one of my reflection points. I tend to stay on speed bar as I get into the lift until it levels out because you know, if it's rising, then the wing's pitching back a bit. If I ease off the speed bar, it's going to pitch back more. So I keep on the speed bar until the, basically the, until the wing isn't pitching back, then I release. I was in this rotation, controlling it either on the Bs or the uh, brakes, can't remember which. Um, and I was obviously thinking about how to get this out. Um, I'm not sure if I attempted to pull on the left hand side. I don't think I did because it didn't seem like a sensible thing to do as it would have, well, I doubt it would have made any improvement because there was so little of the left hand side wing. Managing the speed of rotation using the right hand uh, riser, that's a rear riser or brake. I think I attempted to slow it down so it rocked back a little bit then I released it and I remember thinking ah it surged that's a cleaning opportunity and I'm pretty sure I um, tried both brakes at that stage but that didn't make any great difference to be perfectly honest but something similar happened again again I'm not sure whether I was deliberately taking the right hand wing back to sort of semi-stall it or it was just happening and I was slowing the rotation. Anyway, it um, went back a bit, dived forward a bit more and this time I got most of the cravat out and then I think it was a third time uh, did the same again and the rest of it came out. So yeah, that's what I recall.